Welcome to another episode of Mushio Shugio. Um, we're here with uh, John Johnston today. Uh, pick a camera, mate, just to sort of <laughs> smile and wave at. Um, <laughs> I don't do a lot of smiling, actually. <laughs> so we're here with John Johnston, um, the, the head of adaptive karate. Um, eighth Dan, I believe now. Yeah. 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 Um, and long serving karateka and, and well experienced gent in general. So, um, John, just tell us a bit about yourself, where you started, and sort of your your karate journey in brief. Well, like most school kids, uh, I, I dabbled in a bit of uh, bit of boxing and uh, did a little bit of judo. It wasn't wasn't much about it at uh, at time. I was a, yeah. a youth, uh, always interested in martial arts. Uh, first two influences was uh, a man called Flint and. Uh, uh, a mature and can candidate, the uh, Frank Sinatra played the starring role. Ah, oh, right, yeah. And there was a little bit in it. Of it, it it's crap now, <laughs> <laughs> but at the time, it looked great, and it was uh, it was taken from um, He and Godin. All oh, right, yeah, he did, okay. it, did the Suzuki and, and the throw and everything. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. That is, yeah, yeah. So, th those, uh, it, what is it? Uh, I can't remember his name, uh, James Coburn in a man called Flint. Of course, they was doing the chops to the neck, people falling down, and, and that, and <laughs> that, that ended up leading into the old Bond <laughs> films, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, the henchman gets knocked out, yeah, <laughs> but you know, you. you in those days, it looked really cool. It looked really good, and I, oh, I want to do a bit of that. And then the Bruce Lee era came along, and uh, myself and some friends wanted to get involved. We, we went and looked at several clubs, some kung fu clubs, some water clubs, and I was fortunate enough that uh, Rick Jackson had just come back from Japan. And was setting up a club in, in what's Compta University now. It was Lanchester Uni uh, Polytechnic at the time. Uh, big club went along and looked at it, and, that, and I thought that that looks like what I want to do. You know, the, the the essence of it was was all there. It was it was big and robust and and that. Uh, yeah, and uh, I started from there and, uh, you know, trained with Rick for, for quite a few years. And uh, we, had a, we had a good, solid club. I would say now it, was a, it wasn't the best type of karate, but it was strong and it was solid. Yeah. And, and, the, and it built a foundation. Uh, we never had a session without blood. <laughs> so real yeah. old school karate. Yeah, club old then, school, yeah. old school stuff, and <laughs> and, 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 that. and and you know it, it was that's what set me on the road. So you know, cool. So you you sort of had that start. Um, at what point did you start to sort of veer away from what you consider traditional karate into? You know more of what you do now. You you sort of adaptive side of things. Yeah, um, it, it it was always in my mind that, that how restrictive karate could be in in its general format. Yeah, and I, I was always looking at different things. I I used to go and train with different clubs as well, uh, right from the right from the from beginner stage. Uh, um, I used to go to a Wadaroo club, which was, and that, and that had a different aspect to it from the karate that I was doing. Uh, it was mostly about freestyle, and uh, the whole club used to beat me <laughs> till I got to about purple belt, and then I built built the whole. Then I was beating everybody in the club, including the instructors, oh, okay. because they've th th it was. The foundation that we had was really strong, and that they, they they found it hard to deal with me. 
So okay. you saw you basically had a, a completely different style that they couldn't work with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they did. <laughs> I don't like it up on Mr. Manning. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah and, uh, I, and I started working the doors, so that gave me a different perspective on, on how things work. And I was working with a lot of old school boxers when I first started working the doors. Uh, and I learned a lot from them. So you're talking like an era of people, particularly then bouncers. They bounced people, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, that, yeah. That, that's you know yeah, that's yeah. sort of that that era of really tough guy. They they were hiring rough guys to deal with rough customers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and country country was a, a very very rough city. Still is. Uh, we, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the thing you had in country, everybody had money. Yeah. You know, everybody had money because of the car factories and. People, it, it was uh, a culture that was brought from up north, from Ireland, from Scotland, and that where you drank every day. Yeah. You know, blokes went out in the evening down the pub, but that, that, they, they didn't sit in and watch Netflix or anything like that. They were down the pub, all the blokes were down the pub, and because and, they all had the money to do it. So we time on the doors, um, you obviously had that influence then from the guys you worked with as well as your own experiences, and that's yeah. what changed the way you were training or the way you were, you, it, it, you were sort of building yourself up then? It, the times I, I was working on the doors are the times I was starting to get different influences within Shotokan Karate okay. because uh, I was going squad training, um, so we were training under different people, and certain people which we won't mention at the moment, because <laughs> they're in disgrace, but that's a different story, we won't go there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but those people uh, were, were, were part of the influence that, that my karate had, uh, that, that type of training, and of course, uh, at the time I started working the doors was also the time uh, Sensei Kawazoe came over to England and he spent a lot of time with us because he used to travel up from London to do uh, clubs within the, the central area. Uh, we had a full-time dojo, so he used to come up during, during the day and we'd train with him during the day and then go and train with him in the evening. So, I got that direct Japanese influence and that from the, from the best technician in the world at the time. How did you find that sort of, um, was there much of a difference between, you know, the more the more English people you trained with and the, the Japanese? Was there a difference in approach or intensity? Or well, uh, it, it's, I understand now a lot of what he was trying to uh, convey to us, but of course there was the language barrier. So he wasn't able to actually uh, articulate what it what it was that he wanted us to to do. Uh, so it was he was showing us, but couldn't tell us. Couldn't. But it was still it's still a strong influence. It was still very very good. There's, there's there's things that I still retain now from those days. Uh, but yeah, I use I use them. In my training all the time. Well, you referenced a lot of them today, um, you know, and the, the fact that you're still learning, you know, from from kata that you've been doing for years and years. Yeah, yeah. Well, it should be. Uh, uh, you know, we've had this discussion earlier. Yeah. You, if if your karate is not progressive, then it's just a martial exercise, and 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 that in itself is okay. You know. You, you, if, 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 that's all, if that's all you want from it, is to have a, a recreational exercise, which you can do once, twice a week, mm. an hour, an hour and a half per session, whatever it may be, yeah, fine, good. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but again, it's, it comes down to uh, policy of being honest. You, you've got to be honest with yourself first. Yeah. 
before you can be honest with other people. Once you're honest with yourself, you can be honest with other people. And then you can make uh, things more progressive. So on a bit that sort of, you know, being progressive and stuff like that, um, thinking about like adaptive karate, how did that come about then? Is, is, that, is that something that's fairly recent to you all? No, this is, this is, this goes back many, many years. Uh, I don't normally name drop, but I will do. Uh, name uh, drop. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a, a good friend of mine, and a, he was a student of mine, Jeff Thompson. Yeah. Uh, we were having a, a, a session one day, and uh, I was saying to him that you, you can't do the, the general karate techniques and expect them to work. In reality, you have you, ha you have to adapt them, and he, he picked up on it. And he went, so it's adaptive karate. I went, yeah, it's adaptive karate. Well, I kept it uh, <laughs> since, since that. So you know, we're going back thirty years or so. Uh, well, obviously, Jeff, Jeff's a big name, isn't he? You know, um, I think most people today that have sort of veered into, you know, the more realistic. Um, dealing with violent side of martial arts, particularly karate, and they will have come across his, his sort of work. And oh, yeah, yeah. You, 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 you can't help going on YouTube and falling over him, <laughs> popping up left, right, and centre. Uh, yeah, but that was him in his formative years. Uh, and that, and as I say, that, that's, that's where it developed, just to. Uh, Within our training and the conversation we had one day, and, and that, and I thought, oh, I like that name. And it's that, just he, of... he, yeah, he's he's a wordsmith, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Easy while it's there. So, um, just moving on to the other other side of adaptive karate. Yeah. Um, you also do karate for um, the disabled. Yeah. You do training for people, people with, disabilities. With, with disabilities. Yeah, uh, and uh, again, it's a you know, the, the name uh, is adaptable for, for for what we do, like we've done this uh, this morning, but also for the people with disabilities. And that. um, that's something now I've been working solidly with for about the last five years. I was dabbling with it before that, and, you know, uh, we always have a problem with it. And you'll know yourself that the problem occurs because uh, sustainability. Yes. Uh, everybody thinks it's a good good thing to have. It's a great tool for people with disabilities. It, it gives them uh, inclusion into uh, not not so much a sport, but an activity, which a lot of a lot of activities and sports they're not able to do. You know, they they have they haven't got the, the coordination and uh, mm -hmm. sort of perception for uh, ball games. Yeah. You know, but they can all do karate because you, know, you, you can hold a pad up and you can get them to hit it. Well, and that exercise when I, I visited um, before, you, you, you had people that were struggling with their coordination and I watched a chap um, effectively move through uh, Kion, Kata. Yeah. You know, um, was it perfect? No. But was it coordinated and in the right direction? Yeah. And, yeah. you know, it, beyond just seeing how technically apt they were, you, there, was a, there was a really good sense of community because you've got, you got all their people. There's loads of engagement yeah. because, one, they support each other. Two, we have a laugh and a joke. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Uh, so it ke keeps it light. It, is, 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 it takes a, away some of the pressure because they have they have all sorts of different anxieties, and that you know I mean they've got disabilities, but they are normal people, yeah. and they have anxieties and uh, and inhibitions and different things, and that to get them to work with you and and, and to go past those things. Uh, build up their self-esteem and their the confidence, and that's a beautiful thing to see. And it's 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 a challenging uh, time, 
But at the same time, it's an enjoyable time, time I have with them. There's a lot of reward in it, isn't there? Um, loads, loads. You know, I, I enjoy my lessons. Yeah, as you know, you came along yeah, and, that, yeah, yeah. and that group that, that I do on a Thursday morning, uh, they're, they're a funny they're, bunch. They're, they're <laughs> some of the best fans of, of sort of experience in age. They're brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah and the, you know, it's the same every week than that. Something for me to look forward to. But I do other groups as well, and and no, you uh, you met some of them. Uh, that was at the leisure centre. Yeah, yeah, but they they normally in a, like a day centre. Where that was a, a one off. That right, okay. that that one. Uh, so not all of the, all the the people that are in the groups were were there that day they were doing different activities it was like an exhibition for them for different activities but again they all came along you know there's a, a, a real engagement with them and that, 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 that sense of community is probably something um just from my own point of view that, that more martial artists could learn to be fair you know, yeah, they, they, there's a there's nothing but support for each other in those groups. Yeah, and and, and you know. th there's there's no stupid egos. No, <laughs> uh, and uh, we're not we're not worried about uh, finances. We are worried about finances because we want to be able to fund it to, to be able to make it sustainable. That's always the but but it, it's it's yeah. it's not it's not it's not a thing where you've got to do this particular thing. To make sure that you retain those people yeah. for, for for the money, um, yeah. So it's a different, it's a whole different ball game which which we're issued with on uh, on that. That's cool. So just to move on from that, um, thinking about like the aspects of community in that, um, I know you've got coming up a three amigo seminar, um, where yep. you're coaching alongside the song Oliver and Steve Lowe. Um, how did that sort of come about? One of the things I'm fairly good at is facilitating things, and that not necessarily organising them, but uh, you know, um, Simon's a, a, an old friend of mine. We, we go back to sort of Brown Belt era, which is we're talking nearly 50 years ago. <laughs> you might want to say that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, a few years back, Simon and I got back together uh, um, training-wise. We started doing seminars, and I said to Simon, and that was a guy that you would really, really enjoy meeting, and that. I introduced him to Steve Lowe and said, I said, well, shall we do a seminar together? Yes, please. Mm -hmm. And I said, um, yeah, it was left up to me to organise the venue for the first one. And, and, that, and I just came up with the name of Three Amigos. And, you know. It's just sort of run from there. <laughs> it's, 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 yeah, it's developed from there. Uh, been through uh, different scenarios of, of how we get, how we're going to work it, but now we've come down to doing it in the three different areas uh, as a one day. -er. And I've yet to speak to them, so I shouldn't really be talking out of turn. We might be doing one in a different area uh, next year. Okay. Might be doing one in Cornwall. Mrs. going to kill me. <laughs> 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 no, that, that would be ace. So, yeah, yeah. Um, you've obviously got a history with Simon. Did you train under the same instructor, or uh, were you just sort of competing and taking part in the same sort of service? Well, I, I, I was from Coventry, and, and Simon was from Nottingham. But uh, we used to have get togethers, the, the various clubs around the, the, the central area, on, on a regular basis either through uh, the competitions, the courses, and we used to organize our own things. Uh, and Simon, Simon was uh, a student of um, Terry O'Neill. Yep. So he used to have Terry come to, uh, to Nottingham. And of course we 
got to go and train with Teddy. Yeah, Neil. of course. Yeah, yeah, he went know, out to he, yeah he, well, he was he was my karate hero. Uh, he he was. still is everybody's. You know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I still wish to wake up one morning with, uh, you know, he's, he's like prime physique. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably not going to happen, but there you go, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You have him kick, him, kick you on the top of the head and that. I thought he'd put my spine through my backside. <laughs> <laughs> His dreaded axe kick. <laughs> yeah. No, that's really cool. So, with your, you know, like you, you mentioned your competition and stuff like that. What's your sort of um, your history and relationship with your competition? Starting off competition wise, uh, first competition we went in as a club. Every one of us got disqualified. <laughs> <laughs> we was just too heavy handed, and that, that was the way that we trained. And we thought. You know, we was the only show to can club in the competition. Every everybody else was what uh, <laughs> there was some famous names there, like Peter Peter Spanton and different things, and they got their things, and everybody was leaping about. And we was just going bang. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that was a wake up call that we you can't do that in general competition. Um, then we started competing. Uh, sort of regionally and going to the the nationals at Crystal Palace, which was the KUGB yeah. nationals, which was a big day. And that, uh, strangely enough, we used to get a coach uh, with Simon's lot. Ah, right, okay. <laughs> so we all used to go down together, and that Simon and I would be on the back of the coach on the way back. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we were another friend of ours from the, another club. But anyway, yeah, so there was that. And then, shall I be controversial or not? Oh, yeah, do we? Yeah, go on, go on. <laughs> I used to, uh, to organise an all-grades uh, course under Frank Brennan. This was when he was just up and coming. Uh, he was a young lad. Uh, I first met Frank. I was I was purple belt. He was a green belt when I first met him. Uh, he was a young lad of fourteen. Uh, used to come to Coventry with a certain instructor who shall not be named. Uh, anyway, I watched him develop, and that, and he was then. Uh, KGB Grand Champion. He was yeah. winning Kata and Nakumite. So he used to organise that he would come uh, and do an all-grades course. And out of, out of the funding that I got from that, I, I paid for a private lesson for myself. And uh, there used to be myself uh, and about four or five other instructors, people, some people that you know, some people that you, you wouldn't know, but people like Ronnie Christopher and that, we, yeah. we all were in the sort of same area. Uh, and that, that was the start of what was the, the Central Region squad, uh, which became a really strong squad uh, that used to, the Central Region of KUDB, sort of went from Doncaster down to Oxford, from the Welsh border across to Ipswich. So it was a big area. Yeah. There was 50 odd clubs in that, in the central region, you know, which is bigger than most associations today. Yeah, it's just massive, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I gave that working model to uh, central region, the KGB, to use, which I still use today, uh, which something just came up on Facebook, which cut me out of the picture. And uh, uh, anyway, we're going to go there. But selective memory, uh, they gave credit to the wrong people, but it was it was my brainchild that, that, that got that off the ground. As I say, I was a facilitator, and I was good at doing those things. Uh, and so we had uh, regular squad training 12 plus times a year and under uh, Frank Brennan as a coach and uh, uh, 
due to the money that was brought in through the old grace course and everything. And our squad uh, fought nationally and internationally. And uh, yeah, it was good days, great camaraderie and that. I can't ever remember losing a, 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 a team fight. I lost loads of individuals, but I never, never lost a team fight. It was too precious. So you had that solid crew there then, didn't you, that, yeah. were, that were hammering it? Yeah. Well, in, in the central region, I mean, we had four world champions. Dean Hoskins, uh, Ronnie Cannons, uh, not George Best, um, uh, Ronnie Christopher, of course. Uh, trying to remember his name, my God. Donald, Donald, Donald Campbell, not the, <laughs> he was national champion. Anyway, we had, we had some real, real talent there. And that, and it, it, it was a great education, great, great privilege to, uh, to train with them. Cool. Well, bring, bringing it back up from from the past now to the present. So, what what is your what's your main focus now? What what is it that you want out of your karate? What do you want your karate to do for for other people now? Well, I still I mean I, I, I still want to develop on uh, on the disability side, mm -hmm. uh, and it is developing. There's there's stuff happening. Uh, so that that's that's one avenue. Uh, this year I've um, got up to about twenty seminars on on my calendar so far, with 20. some more some more to come, which is quite good. It's pretty good, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I'm looking at that side. Uh, you know, um, let's face it; none of us are getting any younger, so. The knowledge that I'm picking up, and uh, I, I want to be able to uh, to pass that on. That, that's that's the, the thing that's very important uh, for me is to be able to help people to develop their karate. Yeah. Um, as you know, I've I've looked at the old style of karate that we've done. Uh, and broken it down, ripped it apart, kept all the best bits, discarded the rest, and and uh, introduced other, other influences, you know, from the uh, time of kickboxing, boxing. Uh, I mean, I get I get great influences from Salat and different things like that these days, and. Uh, just keep working myself. Uh, I, I, I don't want. I don't want to be in a position where I can be where I, I, I allow myself to become complacent. Yeah. I, I hate complacency. I hate it in others, so I should detest it in myself. It's easy to slip into that, as I've been explaining to you. I've been a bit lazy over the, over this yeah, last those couple of months. And troughs, yeah, yeah, <laughs> but. You know, uh, I, I, hopefully I'll kick, start, I'll kick start my training regime again tomorrow. I'm going up to Wakefield to train with Peter Considine. That's, uh, that's not an easy uh, Sunday morning. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, uh, it's inspirational as well because then I'll come, I'll come away and I think, oh, I've got to get a little bit stronger, get a bit fitter, you know. So we're going to see you like twice as <laughs> big as the three Vigo seminar. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, I, I, I mean, I, I've thought about doing the bodybuilding bit uh, in, in the past and everything, and that. And I thought, no, hang on there, really. That's an ego job. <laughs> <laughs> no, just to, you know, just to go along and start doing all, all the business, especially at my age. But there is that temptation, and that, but you see. <laughs> You, you know, you, you can just do too much. I mean, I like my food too much to restrict my diet. And, 
Ja, 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 Oh, they don't, don't want to be having chicken salad for breakfast, dinner and tea. <laughs> cool. So just to wind things up, mate, if you've got any one piece of advice to sort of pass on to folks, what would it be? It's a general piece of advice and that that they've got to look at what they're doing within, within their martial arts or whatever martial arts it is. And be open-minded to other influences. Take on board things that are good from, from other disciplines, their own disciplines, which have, have a different perspective to it. Get themselves out and about. Something that you're always talking about yes. is getting on, on various different seminars, just going to different clubs yeah, all the time, you know. Uh, it's not easy because financially you, you can uh, you, yeah, you, it's you've a, got it's you, a struggle, yeah. you've got you've got fuel costs you've got the you know yeah. costs of seminars oh god uh calf my girl i've got one coming up it's 300 quid for the weekend if i yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't really need to know how to disarm somebody with a plastic gun. I really need that 300 quid. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, anyway, we won't go there. No, too late we are. No, we haven't. <laughs> <laughs> that, that'll just be another section. We'll, just have, uh, we'll do another video where we just rant. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, uh, just financial considerations is there, uh, but you know, I, I always used to go round to the, to the local clubs. I wasn't always welcome, but I used to go anyway uh, and uh, join in a session. And, and, uh, I couldn't echo that more, I'll be honest, mate. It's, yeah, yeah, I yeah. think more people need to just yeah. work in general. Well, throw themselves into even, the even if you go to a club and it's not that good, at least you, you're being informed that these are things that you shouldn't be doing. Yeah. Not necessarily things that you should be. It's doing. always a learning experience. <laughs> it should yeah. be, yeah. Yeah. Every, every opportunity you get to learn, you should take it. You know. Uh, and as I say, MacDojos, they serve a purpose. Yeah. Uh, uh, and that is that those people that would normally be sitting on the couch watching the television, that they're, they're they're out and doing a little bit. And you might get one or two which take it that little bit further. You know. Absolutely. Uh, cool. and, and, if, and that comes back to the honesty bit again, you know, you've got to say to yourself, is what I'm doing worthwhile and all the rest of it? And yeah, do it doesn't it, suit what you Yeah, and, and, and if, if I'm the sort of, I've got the sort of nature where I want to do something but not very much, well, that's, that's, that's fine, you know. I mean, I used to go out every morning, and I, I might do 10 minutes to an hour. So I used to do it every morning. And, that, and if I'd done 10 minutes, I didn't, I didn't chastise myself for it. I didn't feel guilty. I'd done 10 minutes more than most people did at 7 o'clock in the morning in the freezing cold, you know? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely, mate. Yeah. Cool. All right, well, John, thanks for your time. Thanks for having Thank us and that. And, um, yeah, hope we'll... So hopefully we will we will see you again um, soon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> For more well, raining. Well, you will, we will do, won't we? Yeah. Appreciate it, mate. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you ever so much. No. So, John, you've you've done a lot of this stuff with us before. But this is stuff that we uh, we do for the grading. As you know, I don't I, I don't have a grading syllabus um, as such. I won't I won't go into a big explanation. But there, there's is some stock stuff that we that we do. Okay. Whether you do it on the day or not. It's dependent on my mood. <laughs> <laughs> because if, 
if from now until the, the grading comes up and you it'd be the same for you, this is stuff that you've done time and time again. Okay. I do a role in assessment. Uh, the grading on the day, yes, it, people are put under pressure to do a little bit. It's not a long grading. We don't do a uh, Kaka Shinkai, which is 25 man fight, nine hours on the mat or anything like that. You know, half an hour on the mat. I've already uh, done a full assessment over a, a six to 12 month period. And that. I don't. I don't need to teach them things which they're just going to replicate on the day and just do it panic fashion. Don't need. I don't need to do that. Okay. I might give you these sort of stock exercises that we do That's and change them slightly because it's adaptive karate. You've got. To, you've got to be able to adapt. You've got to be able to adjust. Okay. So. I was going to be in the other pads. We was going to do some uh, some of the double hip twists, but so punching wise, we do we do we might do one or two different exercises. Sometimes we do three. Sometimes we'll do uh, some Renzuki. We're just going to do Renzuki. Okay. So, Gizami Oizuki first. Uh, Gizami Diakazuki first. Not too close. Because I want you using your legs. It's about development. So if I'm too close, I'm only going to be using my arms. I want to be. I want to be using my legs the wrong distance in for what we work for. So it's just gizuki yakuzuki. Just that, that feel. And if you notice it's not so it's not gizami yakuzuki. Oizuki yakuzuki. The Akizuki, the Akizuki. Got that? Oh, so, so. Can I say that again, please? Yeah. I'll do it slow. The Zami, the Akizuki. Oizuki, the Akizuki. The Akizuki on the spot. Step, the Akizuki. Yeah? Oh, so. <laughs> so, if we come up this end and work down the room, if you jump in with these two, they'll be jumping on cameras. They'll jump on the cameras now and again. So, yeah, you go. Yeah. 
So you've got to draw in your legs. From here, if I'm delivering this, so it's about timing of delivery. You don't want that step up. Same in the catheter. Let the shoulders. Let the shoulders go. Just bring that foot in. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, I'll pull you up on this on your catheter because I watched your catheter. <laughs> um, so we won't. Context. I can be stepping and go boom, pubic bone. Yeah. Or I can be, <laughs> I can be pulling the head down and then bang. Yeah. Or I can be taking the arm and attacking with it. The same technique, principle the same. As you step through, there's a drop. Don't just move your arm. Sometimes you do this with one of the and sometimes you shut the back. Yeah. 
Then the first one, as opposed to the first one, then the second one. You might just want to feel oh, this is moving. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just put them together. Remember the first bit? We use this. Yeah. Or we can use that with this. With this, with this, yeah. you should start putting them together. That's all right. This is no jar in the jaw, distracting on the eyes, yeah. covering up. Okay. With a sneaky shot, yeah. Try to cover up, come down. Oh, I come in. We have to come across lots of, lots of different options, yeah. I want you just to find your preferred way of using it. We've only got five minutes, go. Sanchez, you know, yeah. Yeah. Oh. 
<laughs> oh, I haven't got Sanchin Sensei. Right, no. just 10 so shows. Uh, quite an eye opener. <laughs> Sanchin is l less of a cat and more of a concept. We didn't get too hype polluted about it, about the three battles and all sorts of stuff going on and that. Uh, basically, what you're doing is teaching your body good structure, which is essential for controlling somebody else's body. You know, this you can't do. You can't do that by doing that. Hey. You break your own structure. You do it by doing that. It's the same, yeah. Yes. So, and once you start using that in your kata, you'll find your kata improves because you're not breaking the bottom half from the, the top half. You're keeping them connected. Awesome. Yeah. So. We're just going to do the art movement first. Yes. Right. So first, make sure that you, where you start, that that is connected. And your body's relaxed. You're going to be doing enough tension in a minute without it starting with tension. Yeah. Make sure your stanchion is correct. Your knees bend the same way as your toes. Don't put extra pressure on your, on your hips, your knees and your ankles. Or going in different directions. One. So elbows just off your body. Yes. Here. And here. <laughs> when I pull my hand back for Hikate, I don't let my elbow swing. I pull my hand towards my shoulder and then pull this in. Quite simply because if I if I want to pull Gary and I pull by swinging the elbow. I want to pull from here. Okay. Yeah? You can feel your own muscles doing the work. Yeah? That, I can't feel my muscle doing the work. Yeah? Makes sense, yeah? Two. Three. going to release your hips, you're not going to break the connection, you're going to release your hips. Yeah. 
Boom. Don't step, just the right hand. Left hand, two. Three. Don't step, just the right hand. One. Left hand, two. Right hand, three. Left hand and leave it out, four. This is up, down, in and down. You're not just going in, you're going down as well. Yeah. Because this could be a head. So the pressure's down, so you want to So they come up and then down, is that, yeah? They come down and out, same time, yeah. One. Yeah. A nice wrist straight. Yeah. So the little fingers go. There's variations on this. I just do it the way I like. Because it's my cat, so I don't care. <laughs> I cover I I cover across my body with my left hand as my right hand. I want my elbows coming together. You'll see Gojo and that do it slightly different. It comes and it's too, yeah, it's very. And then you get the other people which do a big windmill job. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Unless there's somebody standing in the side of you, there's no point in blocking out here. Hey. Okay. So from here we go in. in. Inside your body line. Yeah. One. And stepping back. Stay back, sorry. Hands in way around you. Ah. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. So, my left locks Joe down as my right covers Chew down. Two. And step back. Yeah. Right. 